Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about MySQL RDBMS database and how we can use MySQL RDBMS database with a .NET 6 application. MySQL is another extremely popular open source RDBMS database. MySQL is used in Twitter, Facebook, and WordPress is another widely used blogging application which uses MySQL as its backend database. MySQL can be really, really fast when it comes to read performances, and there are certain applications MySQL is more preferable compared to something like PostgreSQL, especially if the data structure is simple and you need much better read performances. So for installing MySQL, you can go to mysql.com and then from there you can install the community version. The community version also comes with the MySQL Workbench software, which I have opened here, and using which we can manage the database and run SQL queries in the query file. So to start with, we need to create a new database or new schema in the MySQL. And for that, we can use this button here, which says create new schema. And here, I'm going to create a new schema called demo. And I'm going to apply. And as you can see, we can also create the new schema using create schema command. Okay, now the schema is created. So I can just go here and I can say use demo, which will set my database as demo. Once it is done, I can go ahead and create a new table. And for that, I can use create table command, which is a similar command for creating table in other database programs also. And I'm going to create a table user, which has ID, which is int, and it's a primary key. And I want it to be auto-generated, auto-incremented number. So we can set it as auto-increment. And the next is going to have a name, which is a worker. And then third, it's going to have an email, which is also a worker. And not null. And finally, it will have address. It's also a worker, and let's keep it as 500. So this is creating a new table. I can execute this and we can see that the table is created. Let's get rid of this command now. And now we can do a select start from users. And we do not have any data, but it is showing the empty user table. Now let's insert a couple of record. to add name, email, and address. So this will create one record and then we can create Another record. Let's execute. And now let's just select this part and execute. And we can see user one and user two are added to the database. Now let's go ahead and use our .NET application to access this table. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to access MySQL database from SQL Server. And for the purpose of ORM, I'm going to use my favorite micro ORM Dapper. And I already installed Dapper into this project. 
And the other thing we would need to install is mysql.data, which is the .NET Core cl client for accessing the database. This is the main driver that we need. So for creating the connection, we can use using var connection is equal to new my SQL connection. And for the connection string, I'm going to pick it up from the environment variable. Environment dot get environment variable. And I created an environment variable with the name connection. So I'm just going to use that. Let me get this to the next line. And I'll have to add the namespace mysql.data.sql client. So I'm going to add that. And then what I can do is I can say var users is equal to connection dot query. And query is part of the Depper namespace. So I need to add that as well. And then I can say user. And here I can say select ID name email address. Let me get this to the next line as well. Address from users. So this is just selecting all the records. And let's create the user model also. So for that we can say public record user ID name email and address so that's our user and then we can do console dot write line and we can print out the users for printing out the user let's print it a little bit in a better format so we can do string dot join and for the separator I can do environment dot new line so that it creates a new line as a separator and then I can do users dot select users dot select let's say user dot name and then user dot email and then user dot address so this is going to print out the name email address comma separated and the two records in two different line so let's run this application and see is it as easy as I'm showing here so this is going to be the moment of truth so let me run and once the console starts up we can see user1 user1 at the rate email.com 123 user2 user2 at the rate email.com and 456 streets as expected the data is printing and as you can see it's literally within using just three lines of code we could print out the data and for that we had to use mysql to data nuget package for the driver purposes and Dapper as the micro RM for accessing the data. And this is as simple as that. Now let us create a store procedure and try to see how we can access the store procedure. So for creating the store procedure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. So let's create a store procedure. create the store procedure we can say create procedure and let's create a procedure which does the same thing which is get users it returns all the users and it doesn't have any parameter and then we can say begin and then here I can say 
select id name email address from users that's about it let's end it And it delimiter. So this should create the cat users object. So let's run. And we can see it created the cat users store procedure. Now let us go back here and let us change these these to get users and we can pass the common type. Common type dot store procedure and let's run this and we should see the exact same result now in the console and we can see both the users are showing up now let us show an example where we can use a parameter to access a store procedure which is parameterized so for that let us create a store procedure called get user and which is going to take a in parameter let's say the in parameter is identifier integer and here we can say the same thing but add a where condition id is equal to identifier and that's about it let's execute this and this should create the store procedure get user and to access the it we are going to just change this and we have to pass the parameters so for the parameters i can create bar parameters equal to uh, for the parameters we are going to use the dynamic parameters so we can say new dynamic parameters and then i can add to the parameter the key or the name of the parameter is going to be identifier and for the value let's say we want to pick up the second one so the id will be two and then for the data type we're going to say in 32 and then we can also say the direction of the parameter as input and that's about it let me put this into the add the namespace so that these lines become shorter so we have that i just added the system to data to the using statement here so now we have that and then finally here I can pass the parameters here and after that test of the thing so now we are passing the two so if we run this application we should see user 2 in the response so let's run it and as you can see as expected we are able to see user 2 in the response for the identifier 2 or the id 2 so as you can see it is extremely simple and as easy as accessing a SQL Server or Postgres database, similar way we can access MySQL database through Dapper and using mysql.data NuGet package. So this is two basic operations in terms of select all and select as well as using store procedure. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. In my next video, I am going to deal with insert, delete, update, and few other operations of MySQL using .NET. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.